Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. Today's subject is how to deal with unwanted emotions. As usual, before we start uh, our um, webinar, uh, we're going to do a meditation together and uh, I'd like you to just relax, center yourself, uh, sit comfortably and bring your attention inwards towards the center of your being. Take a deep breath and just relax into this moment. Just let go of whatever you're engaged with, any stories or whatever is happening. Just relax in this moment. And I would like you to, as you're doing this, imagine that you're fading away from inside, you're emptying out, like you, there's a conduit, you are a conduit, and whatever material is inside you is vape, vaporizing out of you, and you're becoming empty. And it's just like an empty conduit. There's nothing in it. So take a deep breath for a moment and just visualize that you are empty. There is nothing in you. And all thoughts, emotions, they're just air. They're clouds and they're vaporizing out of you and they're disappearing. And you're simply a, an empty conduit. That's what you are. There's nothing in you, you're empty. There's no ideas, no thoughts, no emotions. Everything is leaving you. And you're simply here in this state of presence. Here, in this moment, but empty, not engaged, simply present and available for what is. You don't have a preference. You don't prefer something over another thing. Maybe thoughts and emotions come and go. Your role, your job is to simply be present here, being aware and allowing what wants to travel through you to travel through because you're an empty conduit. So I want you to visualize yourself, to see yourself that you are this empty conduit. Now take a deep breath. And let go. And as you're taking another deep breath, begin to visualize that from the bottom of your feet, you are drawing energy from the planet Earth. Your planet Earth sending its powerful prana, healing energy, in a form of green light. It's spiraling through your, through your body, through this empty conduit. As you're breathing in, as you're inhaling powerful green energy full of healing vibrations spiraling through your body, going to this empty conduit, going all the way through all your chakras, connecting every level to each other. And as you're breathing out, it's going through your crown chakra up to the space, up to the sky. 
So go ahead and breathe that in and breathe it out. Again, breathe it in and breathe it out. And you're sitting or lying down comfortably. You don't have an agenda. There's nowhere to go and nothing to do. You're simply available and you're empty. And you're allowing this energy to travel through. Now visualize that it's coming from the bottom of your feet through this empty conduit and it's traveling through the space from the crown chakra up on top of your head. Connecting the earth to heaven through your body. Again, breathe in. Breathe out. This energy that is traveling through you is bringing the wisdom of the planet Earth, the wisdom of millions of years of being around with its energy healing, traveling through your body as a conduit, as a whistle, whistle of light connecting earth and heaven to each other. Go ahead, keep doing it and just relax into it. And if you somehow drift away, that's okay too. Just allow the light to travel through you, to cleanse you, purify you, allow it to dance around you, and be fluid with it, without any kind of agendas. You're simply available, you are here, and you're a vessel for the life force. Allow God to take over your life. You're completely empty. You have no story. You have no past. There is no future. You are simply here, available, and empty, storyless, comfortably suspended in the space, totally surrender to the power of Her Majesty. Let God do whatever wants to do with you. Complete surrender, complete trust. And know that all is well. When you surrender to the power of God, there's nothing to worry about. The force, the light, the spirit takes over your life. Take a deep breath.
And now as you are in this very relaxed place, completely empty, the light begins to change its color from green to gold. And this golden light that is traveling through you begins to illuminate even your body and this conduit. You begin to lose any kind of senses that you possess a body. The body begins to disappear. It's only light. And a deep sense of comfort and bliss and pure love takes over. The light and love have illuminated your body and any kind of senses that you are somebody separated from the source. That notion and feeling has dissolved. There is only the sense of being. There is the sense of I am, but I am not anything. I am the infinite. I am here. I am. I am. I am. The golden light that has taken over your body begins to expand. You are a pure conduit of love and light and you are being used as a beacon, as a torch of spreading this love and light in your neighborhood, in the city and town you live in. It's shining so brightly through you and it's transforming that anything it touches. It's power of love. It's illuminating anything that it touches. It's so strong, the light that all shadows and darknesses disappear and they find themselves powerless at the presence of the light. In this process, you are experiencing pure joy, pure bliss, and love, real love, the divine love that is always here. It's not conditional. It doesn't come and go. It's always here.
simply allow the presence to do its thing. Remain in this place, available, in bliss, in love, silence, in this deep knowing that all is well and there is nothing to worry about. Existence, life, knows what it's doing. It's all perfectly revealing itself. And you're simply here, one with all of it. Slowly, slowly come back
slowly, slowly come back, come back into, bring your attention back into the body that possess, that you possess, come back into its center, And you come back slowly into your senses, feeling your hands, your feet, your knees, your hips. But from this very deep, still and silent place and being centered, And your mind is really still, it's not moving. The mind is still is here. And it's not going anywhere. There are no thoughts because you're in your center. And now you can experience simply being here right now together. But no thoughts without any effort. Just because you are here, focused, you know, you're really like focused. Really on one point, centered. Simply hanging out in this moment, you make that a part of your daily exercise. Whenever it's happening, you take moments in your life, in your day, and you, without any efforts, without even trying to make something happen, you stop. Whatever is happening, just stop and just be focused on your center. You bring your attention to your center, to this place, because you've touched it many times and you're aware of it. And by doing that, you begin to get used to staying centered despite what is going on. There's a pendulum of emotions coming and going and thoughts coming and going. But you're centered. Your attention is focused on one point, whether it's an external point or it's an internal point. And you're not giving in to your thoughts or you're not giving in to your emotions. You stay focused. Like in a way, maybe in the beginning, it kind of maybe like a zombie or something. And you're just staring to one point within or other way. But it becomes very familiar because you've done this before in your meditation. I'm not giving into what is traveling through because you're empty. 
You're not what's traveling through. You're the conduit. So today I'm going to talk about unwanted emotions. And we all deal with unwanted emotions in our daily lives. Sometimes somebody says something or somebody does something, whether they did it purposely or it just happened and it triggers you and all this stuff start to bubble out of you. All these different emotions and thoughts start to come out and disturb you and maybe drive you crazy. Sometimes it lasts for some people a long time. Sometimes it's shorter. So how do we deal with that? How do we deal with that? So let's say you, whatever is the story, you're dealing with uh, your boss, someone superior, you know, in, in the hierarchy of your work and they say something that triggered you or whether they're right or wrong or your family, your partner, your kids, whatever is the situation or something has happened and could be a misunderstanding and has triggered you or just basically based on your hormonal functions, maybe you have a bad day, whatever is the reason, it doesn't matter. Or you watch the news, as a lot of people do, or pay attention to the news and they're pumping a lot of fear, uncertainty in it and that's triggering you and you just all of a sudden you can go through this spiral of downhill into the gutter so all these emotions are coming very strongly for you and when you begin to do your practice when you begin to pay attention you know it's really uh, the spiritual world, the work we do, it's really based on paying attention. That's very important. Now, where does your attention go to? And that makes a big difference on your path. If your attention goes uh, on the thoughts, and, or someone has said something you don't like or your emotions and you really get super focused on it or the attention is really grabbing you and, and it's kind of like you don't have a choice and it's really consuming you and it becomes very real and it starts to bother you and you can suffer. So A is one of the things you want to do is when you do your work and you start to realize that you're the observer, you're observing all the time, your awareness. Awareness's job is to be aware, to be aware of what is happening, whether it's internal or what is happening externally because that's what you are. You're this instrument. You're this being that designed to, to be aware. You can never not be aware. So whatever is happening inside you or outside you, you have an awareness of it. If there's like sirens, there's a fire truck is driving nearby your home and there siren is going really loud you can't help it not to hear it if it's an airplane is flying over or there's a helicopter nearby your home you can't help it not to hear it if uh the tv is very loud and one of your kids turn on the tv and there's loud sounds 
you can help it. You become aware of it. Now, whether it's bothering you or not bothering you, that's a different story. If someone has said something or you're, you're going through some fear, depression, unwanted emotions, you're angry, you're jealous, you're offended, something has happened and it's happening inside you, you can't help it by not being aware of it. So you're aware of what is going on. If right now where you're sitting, if you're uncomfortable, you are aware that you're not comfortable. Or if your body sens sensations change, like you're too hot, you're too cold, um, there's a draft, in, in, or something's wrong with your stomach, or you have pain, you have stomach ache, you have a headache, you're agitated, you can't help it by not being aware of it. So you are aware of what is going on. That's your job. And this awareness is always there. As long as you're alive, the awareness is here. So, but things are happening and moving in this awareness. And we have a tendency to take them personally and treat them as it's ours. And because we've been conditioned to believe that and to view things in that way, that the thoughts that are traveling through your mind and the emotions that are traveling through your psyche, your body, you are really taking them personally because no one has ever told you anything else. Everyone else around you from childhood, including your parents, your nanny, your teachers, your friends, they're all treating this the same way. So you don't have a reason to think any other ways. So you buy into it and you really believe it because the entire world is doing the same thing. And rightfully, you, you don't question it until it comes to the point that it's, you start to suffer and you're really going through it. And then of course, can you, you're gonna use the conventional ways, um, going to psychiatrists or physicians and they give you medication. Of course, these days we have meditation and we have access to spirituality and access to a lot of different teachers and teachings. So maybe after trying the conventional ways, then that doesn't, they don't work then we find our way to this kind of teachings. And if you're lucky, then you come across this other teachings that it says you're not your thoughts, you're not your emotions, and you're not your body, which is, for some people, it's really like weird. What do you mean I'm not my thoughts? What do you mean I'm not my emotions? What do you mean I'm not my body? That's really weird. But I'm telling you, you're not any of these three. In some way, you're one with it, of course. But in essence, you're not them. You're simply aware of them. So by being aware of something, that doesn't mean you're that thing. You simply have an awareness of it, same way you have an awareness of a lot of other things. So if you begin to shift your focus and buy into this and say, okay, I'm gonna try this. I'm not really sure what Zarathustra is talking about, but I'm going to buy into it and give it a try because I have nothing to lose. So, and then see what happens. So, what you simply do is you keep doing a practice and it's effortless really, but this practice is to uncondition, unclutch, from what you've been conditioned to do. 
So in the beginning, it may feel like a little bit of effort, but it's not really putting effort, it's putting your attention. You're taking your attention from where creates the suffering from a false identification with something which is not real to something that is real. And I'm going to elaborate on that one. So you're bringing your attention from the belief, this conditioning that whatever you're thinking is you. So you're identifying with your thoughts because you're hearing these thoughts in your mind. They're traveling through your head and you've been doing this all of your life. So now it takes a little bit of time, but simply you look at it. You, you notice that there's a lot of noise going on in your head, but your ability to observe them and your ability to be aware of them does not change depending on what is going on in your head. There could be a lot of noise and there could be no noise. <clears throat> but there is still an ability to be aware of them. Same thing with your unwanted emotions. You are aware of your emotions are here and you report them. You wake up in the morning and you're not feeling that great. Or you may get up and then 10, 15 minutes after you get some news or you got an email or you got a phone call or something happened or the weather doesn't look good, whatever that is. And a thought may come in your mind, oh, I hate this or I feel bored or, I'm, or you may just somehow trigger it and start to feel really anxious and you're having these anxiety. Or is the planetary alignments like what is happening right now? Uh, uh, you know, January 12, 2020, and this period that there is the planetary alignments of the Pluto and Capricorn, and there's a major things are happening in this, and this major portal has opened up right now, and. So that is affecting you and it's triggering your mind and activating your mind and really affecting your emotions. And there's all these ups and downs happening inside you. Like you feel like you're going crazy or whatever is going on with you. So, and the feelings in a moment are very real because you're, you're experiencing this turmoil. You're experiencing these strong, feelings and emotions. So naturally, if it's bothering you, you don't want them and you're trying to avoid them and get rid of them by any means that you is available to you. But it doesn't work. I mean, it may work temporarily, but it doesn't work long term. So or momentarily is working. So by re reprogramming yourself and, and having this willingness of not falling back into your old pattern, not falling back into this way, by paying attention, by shifting your awareness, by bringing your attention from here, you're bringing your attention to here. Now, I'm not talking about brainwashing yourself or trying to do positive thinking and positive visualization. I'm not talking about that by saying that, oh, I'm not afraid. I'm not in fear. I don't have anxiety. I am not, I'm feeling really good. And this is a great day. And I'm going to visualize sunshine. And I'm going to keep telling myself everything's okay. Everything's wonderful or I'm gonna have a pint of ice cream to make me feel better. I'm not talking about doing those things. I'm talking about a simple, a very simple way of reprogramming yourself. Super simple, without any effort. 
is simply bringing your attention from what's really there, what seems to be real by these emotions that are coming through your body, which are taking, taking over the fear, the anxiety, this unwanted emotions. Simply, you diffuse the entire thing if you stay in your center by bringing your attention to your center. Again, let me be very clear about this so I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm saying. And please pay attention to this part because it's important. You're not, not resisting your emotions. You're not pushing the emotion away. You're not telling yourself they don't exist. You're not telling yourself, I feel good. You're not trying to numb yourself by alcohol or medication or smoking or eating. You're simply staying where you're at. You're this empty conduit. You're simply, these emotions traveling through you. And when they're traveling through you, you can feel their effects. Just like if there's a big storm traveling through your area and it starts to dump snow or hail or rain, you can't just say it doesn't exist. You see it, you feel it, you're experiencing it, but the storm will go away. And then after the storm goes away, then the sky is clear and silence, calmness, stillness comes back. Same thing here. In these unwanted emotions are happening through you and it's very, very strong. Maybe they're strong, maybe they're not, whatever whatever the degree of it is. But when you start to get into this habit by reconditioning yourself, by taking your attention from full identification with the emotions, changing your identification, bringing your attention inwards towards the observer that you are, bringing your attention towards the awareness that you are by reminding yourself that you're the awareness of the emotions. You are not the emotions. Emotions are traveling through you. They're present, they're here. This, all these emotions, they're traveling through you. They're like clouds and storms traveling through the blue sky. They're traveling into the sky. They're not the sky. They're traveling into the sky. The sky is a container. The sky is simply present, indifferent in what's traveling through it. It could be airplanes. It could be a flock of birds traveling through it. Or it could be storms traveling through it. The sky doesn't say, don't do this. I don't want you here. I prefer sunshine over clouds. The sky doesn't care. It's, it's there. And same thing, when you do your practice and you become the conduit and you're empty, you're a vessel, you have given yourself up to God, you've become an empty vessel, then emotions are traveling through you. Maybe they're fun, maybe they're not but it doesn't matter because you're simply observing them and you are feeling them, but they're not you. You're the observer. You keep remembering who you are. Does it make any sense? I'm not talking about positive visualization. I'm not talking about positive thinking. I'm not talking about reaffirmation that you think positive or you feel positive, that's still being caught into the emotion or the thoughts. We're not talking about that. I'm talking about remind yourself, remember who you are. Remember that you are the observer. 
of the emotions. You're aware that this emotion is here, but you're not it. And why you're not this emotion? You're feeling it very strongly. It's taken over you. It's shaking you. The anxiety is making you feel it. Why am I not this feeling? You are not this feeling because this feeling doesn't last. It's traveling through you. And then after five minutes, 10 minutes, an hour, two hours, a day or two, it goes away. It doesn't stay. But who stays? It's, go, it's going through who? To whom does this feeling appear? It's appearing to you. You are the one who stays here. You as the awareness remains here and the emotion, emotion travels through you. But you don't go. You're here. You are here. The awareness remains the awareness. You are the awareness. You're the observer. You are the presence who's present, 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 here. The emo emotion is traveling through the presence. Something is here that doesn't move and other things traveling through it. Thoughts traveling through you. You can't have the same thought all the time. You don't think about the same thing 24 seven. It's impossible. They come and go. You don't feel happy 24 seven. You don't feel sad 24 seven. You're not in anxiety 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They come and go. They're continuously coming and going. They're traveling through you all the time. You're the awareness of it. This is huge. This is an incredible discovery of simply being aware of what is traveling through you, but not being that thing. So you acknowledge it. The best way to deal with unwanted emotions is to, when they're here, anxiety comes, anxiety takes over you, you're in anxiety, it's really shaking you, it's very uncomfortable, you're really feeling it. It's okay. Get used to telling yourself that reprogramming yourself. Anxiety is here. Anxiety is visiting me. That's the trick. Anxiety is here. Anxiety is visiting me. And then it goes away. It loses its power. It has, doesn't have the power because you're not identifying with it as who you are. You're remembering who you are. You're identifying with the observer. You're, obs you're identifying with your state of presence, the truth of who you are, not with what you are not. Because you're not what comes and goes. These things are traveling through you and they've been traveling through you all of your life. Different thoughts, different emotions, different desires, different state of mind, different, different state of the body, they come and they go. But your awareness, you who are, is aware of these things, remains aware of these things. The power of awareness does not change. You're not going to be less aware or more aware. 
you remain aware. When things are really going well in your life and you're very happy, you are aware that you're very happy. You don't so much, in general, we don't so much concern ourselves with spiritual stuff because things are really going our way. We're getting what we want. But then when things start not going our way and then they fall apart and you're not getting what you want, then you pay more attention. But the attention goes into the suffering. We begin to pay attention. And then we start to suffer because that's where the attention goes to. But if you do your work and you do your practice by bringing your attention, when I say practice, I'm not talking about effort, I'm talking about attention. You bring your attention on the truth of who you are. What is the truth of who you are? The truth of who you are is that you're the presence, you're present, you're the awareness. You are the awareness of your body, you're the awareness of your mind, you're the awareness of your emotions. Because all these three factors, they come and go. None of them stays. They're transitory. They're changing all the time. They're changing in front of someone, something that doesn't change. What is that thing that doesn't change? You are that thing. That thing is, I am. That thing is presence. That thing is the awareness. You are aware. Awareness remains the same other things travel through it. So you simply remind yourself, remember your true identity. And then you start to see that you're free. Freedom is here. So when fear comes, you simply tell yourself, you simply practice acknowledging fear. Fear is here. You acknowledge it. Anxi I'm anxious. Anxiety, anxiousness is here. You acknowledge it. You tell yourself it's here. It's visiting me like a guest. It's come and stayed with you. Maybe it's an unwanted guest, but it's staying there for a couple of days. And then it goes. Fear is visiting me. Fear is here. You acknowledge it that is here because it's big, it's powerful, it's bigger than you, it's taken you over, you can't deny it. You can't resist it. If you're resisting it, it will keep persisting. You simply acknowledge the fact that it's here. But you're not it. You're simply aware of its presence, but you're not it. But you acknowledge it. Oh, fear is here. And then fear goes away. And then maybe there's nothing in between. Then something else comes. Maybe sadness comes. And now you're experiencing being sad. You're feeling you're sad. And then you say the same thing. Sadness is here. Sadness is visiting me. And then sadness goes away. Maybe you feel lonely. This feeling comes, I'm single, I'm lonely, I don't have anyone in my life, I don't have a partner, same place, same thing again. Another Christmas comes, another Easter comes, and I don't have anyone to share it with. 
I am bored, I'm alone. That feeling comes. And the same thing, you acknowledge it, that is here, is visiting you. This ugly feeling of being lonely is here. You look at it, you acknowledge it, it's here, and then it goes away and something else comes. Normally in between, there is nothing. And in that moment that there is nothing in between two different emotions, you get to experience yourself. You get to experience that you're in this deep play, place, and it's still, it's quiet. And those are the moments you get a glimpse of yourself. Because it's very comfortable, there's no suffering, but this is not an emotion. It's not something that comes and goes. This is the background, who you are. You get a glimpse momentarily of yourself, the Buddha, the Master your higher self, your spirit, your soul, whatever name you want to call it, you, because it's not separated from you. It's you. It's not like it's something out there, your higher self. It's something out there and you're down here. It's yourself. But the clouds are gone. The storm is gone. Now you get to see the blue sky. It's perfectly blue. So when you start to do your practice and paying attention, you begin to see yourself more and more because you're not focused on those things that you are not. You start to focus on what you are. So when these unwanted emotions are there, you're not caught up identifying with them so much. You're aware they're there, they're uncomfortable, but they're not who you are. And that, that's a shift because that leads you to freedom because suffering starts to disappear. because you're not identifying with it. You're simply acknowledging it that it's here, but you're not it. There's a shift. There's a separation takes place from before thinking and feeling that you're your sadness, you're your anger, you're your jealousy, you're your despair. Now you're simply aware of these emotions, but you're not them. Yet you feel it. We're not saying you don't feel it. You're going to feel it, but you're not it. And that brings freedom. There's a big difference. All right, so anybody has a question for me? If you have a question, you can raise your hand or write it on the chat box. Yeah. Hi, Uti. Hi. Am, I am I pronouncing your name correctly? Ute. Ute. Right. Yes. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Thank and, you. And, and you live, where do you live? In Germany. Where, where in Germany? Um, it's called Wiesbaden. It's uh, um, half an hour away from Frankfurt. Yeah, right. My friend uh, Boris lives there too. Oh, really? In Frankfurt or Wiesbaden? In this part. Oh, really? Yeah. He, uh, he was at a few of my workshops and at oh, really? my retreat in order. So maybe when I come to Frankfurt, you can meet, meet oh, him. Oh, maybe meet us there. Yes, that would That's be great. Yeah. So thank you for your speech, Tarotrustra. I have two questions. Okay. Um, the first point is um, um, I'm totally... Um, clear with the point that we don't have to manipulate the emotion 
Um, but I'm not clear with the point. I have to look at it. I have to observe it. Or I have to feel it in the moment. The emotion is there. When, when I, when I um, think I, um, I will observe it, then the, um, I go um, back. I'm not in this emotion. I just observe. I can say, okay, I'm not this emotion, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I'm not in this emotion. And the other point when I think about, I feel the emotion in the moment In the moment it happens. I can also say I'm not this emotion, but I have to feel it. I have to go through and feel it. You understand? These yes. two points very well. appeal to me. Okay. So mm -hmm. what, is, what is the question? That's my question. What is the right way to do it? Okay, great. That's a wonderful it's For one. me, there, uh, there are two different ways. I don't understand how right. I can have to put it together or what is the right one. Right. When the emotion is taken over, let's say it's mm -hmm. fear, okay, or anxiety, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What can you do? There's nothing you can do not to feel it because it's bigger than you. And it's oh. In this moment, when I'm I, when I am aware of it, I can separate myself from it. Yeah. So in, in, in a very short time, it goes down. The other way, when I uh, try to feel it, maybe I feel, I feel, I feel, maybe more intense, uh, it increases, and then um, it will stop. Okay, so when the emotion is there and it takes yes. over so you're you're physically literally going through anxiety you you got some news and you're really in anxiety mm -hmm. okay and then you're trying to separate yourself but the anxiety is there it's so strong that it doesn't go. so what you simply do in that process of separating yourself is not trying to resist it and push it away. We're not trying to yes. push the That's emotion okay. away. That's the wrong approach because if you try to any way manipulate it in any way, whatever word you want to put into it, the moment you're trying to manipulate it to go away, you're in trouble. I understand this, yes. Yeah. So the attitude is simply acknowledging it. It's here. You're not doing yes. anything, okay? Not even the notion of separating yourself. You're simply acknowledging it's here. That's all you do. By acknowledging that the emotion is here, separation automatically happens because... Mm -hmm. Now the awareness here, you are aware that you, you are you and the emotion is the emotion. Now this big emotion has taken over and making my body shake, affecting my nervous system, but I'm not it. When I say it's here visiting me, I'm acknowledging, and what you said, you're separating yourself from it by simply acknowledging its presence. Mm -hmm. You're acknowledging it, it's here. And in a split of a second, a separation has taken place without yeah. any effort. Now, that doesn't mean you're not going to keep feeling it. It may last for whatever time but there is no longer an identification with it. There is no longer this helplessness that it's something's taken over you and you have no power. Mm -hmm. By simply telling yourself anxiety is here, anxiety is visiting me, and that's all you do. You acknowledge its presence and in that mm -hmm. acknowledgement of something visiting you you're also acknowledging that you're the awareness of it you are aware of it there is nothing you can do nothing and you don't try to do anything else 
So you get into this habit. Re yes. Reprogram yourself. That whatever emotion comes, you simply tell yourself it's present, it's mm -hmm. here, it's visiting me. Okay. And, so, I'm, and I'm not okay. it. By, by, mm -hmm. by acknowledging it, it becomes very clear that you're not it. You're aware of it. And then yes. it, it dissipates. Yes. Okay. Okay. Then the next question is, at what um, point the healing takes place? You know, um, when, I, when I have this picture there, we have um, different um, spiritual bodies, maybe the emotional body, there is a pattern with this fear, with, with this kind of fear. So now when we make this technique, um, when takes healing place in this, what we, in this all, all these uh, troubles we take with us, you know, um, I don't have the right word in English, Christian. Um, we have this knowledge that we have different spiritual bodies. We have, the, we have this. Um, what, we say? have emotional body, okay? Emotional. We have, this, emotional, we have an emotional body. You body. understand what I mean? Okay. We have, we have these different um, spiritual bodies, you know, from the Hinduism. Okay. So. Yogi, the, okay. The, yes, you, underst you understand what I mean? I, I don't quite, but if you want to, if you just put it in a direct question for me, then. Yes, my question is, when, at what point in this technique, or how take the healing place, so that this pattern we have um, in future um, it doesn't come anymore? Okay. You right. know? Yeah, I get it. Mm -hmm. I get it. I got it. Okay. 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 We, uh, it, there, there is nothing you can do if it's coming or not coming in the future. You, you, you are awareness and your job is to be aware. And emotions and thoughts going to come through you all the way to the last breath you take. Really? Yeah. There, yeah, it's like, it's like if you say, I'm going to acknowledge there is storm and if I keep doing it, then there won't be any storms. Well, bad weather and storms going to come and go all the way to the end of your life. Yes, but I, but I think we have to develop in our life. And, well, that, and there would, mm -hmm. what you're referring to is to control something that's not controllable. You want to create a situation to manipulate that you don't feel things. Things you don't like don't come to you anymore. And we can call it healing. But that's not, that's, again, that's bringing your attention in the wrong place. Because that's never going to happen. So how take the healing, how... At what point it, there will um, healing take place? Okay. I think we, we hopefully we're not the same person with 80 than with 20. Huh? Okay, what do you mean by healing? What sort of healing what? what? What needs to be healed? Maybe some patterns from uh, past life or from the childhood. Some okay. emotional patterns like fear from... Right. Uh, we, yes. Right. The same okay. with the same way I have explained. If you implement this, first implement it for a month, and then we can talk about it again. You have to first, yeah, hi. You have to do it for a while right. to see what happens. Okay? Because right now it's just theory. I'm giving you a way of doing something and we haven't tried it yet so we have oh, to try it we have to try oh, it. Mm -hmm. have i have to... tried this and i have tried this um this uh, this both ways um there's a psychological way they say um 
also in spiritual, feel it and feel it, feel it out. Um, and then it will go. And when you do this uh, for, um, uh, for time, then really this pattern is gone. Hmm? Patterns, patterns are to be observed. You're simply looking at a pattern. You're simply aware of a, an unwanted or a destructive pattern. You're simply look at it. They, they, it's like a snake. It keeps putting out its ugly face and you simply look at it. You come here and I look at it. I'm aware that this thing showed up. I don't do anything about it. I'm simply aware of it. Awareness is here. If awareness is here, then it doesn't have any power over you. Yeah. It has to be effortless. The spiritual world and the work in the awareness must be effortless. It has to be done by attention. Where does the attention go? And putting your attention on something, taking your attention away from something and putting your attention on something else because you have to realize you are God, you're the infinite. It's infinite. The infinity brings your attention on one thing and this infinity takes attention on somewhere else. Where does the attention go? And this infinite being, what does it need to heal? There's nothing to heal. It's already healed. It's, this, it's the presence. I don't know, did I lose you? Are you still there? Booty, because uh, you disappear. I think you got, she's gone. So anyway, but I'll continue. Hopefully she can come back and listen to this part. Um, it all is where the attention goes because the being who you are, the truth of who you are, doesn't need any healing. It's pure presence. And there's nothing you can do to add to it or take it away. It's a recognition of the space. It's a recognition of who we are. By bringing our attention towards who we really are and not putting so much attention on who we used to think we are. It's a shift. Simply by taking our attention off of an illusory character bringing your attention to who you really are. That's all you do in this work. Hi, Alexandra. Uh, ah, hello. <laughs> nice to see you, long time to see. I am so happy to see you. <laughs> yeah, hi. And uh, I'm sorry, I know you wrote to me a while ago and, and I was just in the middle of my retreat. It's very difficult. I know, I know. Yeah. So, and then it's yesterday, finally, I had a chance to reply to all my messages. Uh, probably I had to be here today. Right. <laughs> I feel that it was a message for me. <laughs> yeah. But I wanted to say something about uh, this, uh, what Ute said. Uh, about this healing because for example in my way of thinking there is a healing as well uh, but it starts from observing because I, I was practicing this I still practice this uh, observer being an observer okay uh, and when you observe your emotions and you know you are not them you are separate being you can understand this pattern, this my own pattern, okay? And I could act somehow after it, after it. For example, now I healed 
something uh, one very big one uh, that was uh, making me a big trouble since I was born for example but I had to be an observer I had to first of all not resist the emotions just to accept them that they are here but I when I was an observer I could understand that some emotions uh, are more active or they are they come to surface at certain points yeah. so it was a pattern for me so I yeah. could observe it okay and I could even know that okay I am going to do something so I will feel this right. and I could act somehow right. and search about it and to heal it in some way I think because since I started practicing it, I am a different person, okay? I am totally different. I, I was very emotional. I used to be very emotional. I am still emotional, but I am not this emotion. For example, uh, right. So now you see these animals in Australia, okay? I would cry very much. Now I just observe. Yes. Okay, it's, uh, it's bad, okay? But I just observe. I am... I'm not so emotional anymore. Okay, so so here here we are. You simply brought your awareness on the truth of who you are versus what you used to think you are. Yeah. Okay. Of so then the healing or the shift, we can call it healing. Yeah. Actually, the shift begins to take place there has been a shift in your consciousness that you're not identifying with the emotions as what you used to think you are. You are identifying with the awareness of the emotions. And in that, freedom has started to take over. Of course. Okay, yeah. so we're saying the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, but I th I saw that Ute was kind of uh, I don't know disappointed that there is no uh, healing involved in this everything. But I see it as a but, healing as well. Yeah, it depends what we call healing or shift or whatever. You you are just better after this. You know, yeah, you yeah. Again, it's the the matter of the definition of healing. What is healing? You know. It's how we define healing. Okay, when we don't, for example, for me, when I don't follow my old patterns that were not so healthy, for me it's a healing. Or it's a shift as well, okay? Yeah. It's the right. same thing. Exactly, it doesn't matter because we don't want to get caught in the world of uh, words. You know, whatever, uh, whatever the word is. Healing... <laughs> shifting it doesn't matter the key the the ultimate uh point is that you come to equilibrium and you're happy in your life you're satisfied that you're at peace with yourself that's the ultimate goal correct that you're at peace with yourself am i right yeah yeah, yeah. so you're in this <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Today, yes. Tomorrow, we will see. <laughs> well, yeah. Tomorrow is the same thing. The idea <laughs> is that you have found, you have discovered balance in your life. You're not a victim of ups and downs. That's the key, is to come to balance. And ultimately, as I mentioned, you find inner peace you're at peace with yourself and with your environment you're not in this battle with yourself that's the key and to you we can call it healing so this whole thing that we're talking about is how do i come to this place of freedom so i'm free from emotional ups and downs and that's the way to go. The way to go is simply by remembering who we are. Who am I? I'm the observer. I am. I'm the presence. 
That's who I am. Who am I, who am I not? I'm not the emotions. I'm not my ever-changing emotions. I'm not this crazy pattern of thoughts. I am not this body that is always subject to decay. I'm simply aware of it. That's who I am. Who I am not. I am simply the awareness of it. So we're learning to identify with the real thing and not identify with who we're not. And in that healing happens, the shift happens, the change happens. My problem in the beginning was that I saw that we must not feel bad emotions. Exactly, exactly. And I was trying to resist all the time that, okay, I am observing, but it's still here. And the next day, okay, it's still here. And I was annoyed that I'm doing something wrong. And the next day, okay, again, I am upset. Why? It should be, it should be gone. Exactly. Yeah. It's like me saying that I'm going to manipulate the weather so it's sunny every single day. Well, it's impossible because clouds and storms come and go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the other, the opposite thing was then I had a period of time that it was great. You know, I was just uh, dying with uh, uh, love and light and everything. And then I started to, to be this feeling again. And when it was taken from me, I was like, like uh, exactly. addicted. You know, where, where is it? Where is it? I want it back. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. So that's why I'm talking about equilibrium. So we're not subject to ups and downs, but we find what's the center piece of it, which is not affected by the ups and downs. And that's where you find your peace. That's where you become free because you're not identified with feeling great or feeling bad. Right? You've, because then you're in this pendulum. You're in this up and down all the time. We're trying to free ourselves from up and down. In order to free yourself from the up and down, you have to identify with the truth of who you are. The truth of you, who, who you are is that you are the awareness of the ups and downs. The ups and downs are both welcome but you're not it. Okay? Great. Wonderful. All right, my brothers and sisters, uh, we've coming to the end of our academy. Very nice to see you all. I have an announcement to make that I'm presenting at the LAX uh, Conscious Life Expo. It's in LAX Hilton, Conscious Life Expo, and. I'm going to be presenting for four days from February 7th to the 10th, three days in the expo and one day at the post con and followed by uh, a shamanic healing circle that I'm going to have in Los Angeles. And then I'm going to have a workshop in LA uh, before I head out to Europe. Um, feel free to reach out. Uh, my website is zaratustra.tv. Our email address is info at zaratustra.tv. And uh, you can reach out on my uh, Facebook pages or some uh, my other pages, YouTube or whatever. I have a bunch of different pages that you're welcome to uh, reach out. I also have a... Um, uh, all the webinars are being recorded. We send them to you, those of you who connect with me through our system, Zoom. And also it's being put on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. I, our next academy is going to be next Wednesday. And I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you for joining me. God bless you all. Namaste. Namaste.